When I was a uh, young child, I was probably one of the most adorable child in the neighborhood. Is that true? Is that true? Come on, look at that haircut. That was obviously the adorable haircut back then, right? Okay, right, but that's not important, all right? So when I was um, a young child, I was a child that grew up in a family that was filled with struggles and also mysteries. Given the fact that Cambodia went through decades of economic underdevelopment, political crisis, as well as many other um, challenges, my family was not the richest family in our neighborhood. We grew up in a slum area located in the capital city of Phnom Penh, and we had to fight so many struggles in order to feed our basic needs. My mother, who was the sole breadwinner of the family back then, had to sacrifice her education to give me the education that I have received, as well as to bring me until this stage that I am today. My mother has always been one of my personal inspirations, and one of the things that she has always taught me that I still live with nowadays is that no matter how um, poor you are, no matter where you are from, or no matter who you are, it's always important for us to be good citizens. Immediately after hearing that from my mother, I started questioning myself, like, how can we become good citizens? What are the standards to become good citizens and what are those activities that we need to do to become good citizens? I never had a big or a concrete idea on how to become good citizens, but at the age of around nine, I was exposed to a quote that was once given by a very famous criticist who goes by the name of uh, Stephen Hawking. I'm sure many of you here knows who he is, right? In the year 1988, Stephen Hawking published a book called A Brief History of Time. Many people credit that book because of his contributions to the field of physics. But for me, one quote from that book that I'm always inspired by is the quote which echoes, we are very, very small, but we are profoundly capable of very, very big things. After hearing this quote, I asked my mother again, mom, is it really true that we are capable of very big things? Mom, is it really true that we can make changes to our societies as well as the world as a whole? My mom said that, son, you are indeed capable. Son, you are indeed capable of changing the world. Immediately after hearing this from my mom, I realized that it was probably one of the biggest lies that almost every adult parents would tell their children. For me, I also knew that it was a lie. But this is a lie that I choose to believe in, and it's also a lie that I'm still believing in nowadays. At the age of 17, I entered university at the Royal University of Phnom Penh, undertaking a Bachelor of Arts in International Studies. I graduated in the year 2016, and immediately I applied to become a lecturer of international affairs at the Royal University of Phnom Penh. A lot of people question me, why would I choose to follow this profession? In Cambodia, for example, we all know that lecturers are not well paid. So a lot of people also ask me, why would I choose to follow this profession when I can go to any other professions that can give me better salaries? I turn them back, it's because I realized what my mother said when I was young. I realized that she told me to be a good citizen. And I realized being a good citizen is not just about being a good citizen for your country, but it's also being good citizens for the world, being a good citizen for the international community. And this idea is reflected in the word global citizenship. So in today's speech, I'm going to talk about what is global citizenship? Why should we care about global citizenship? And how do we become effective global citizen? Now, the word global citizenship is a word that has been defined by many scholars, practitioners, as well as professionals out there. According to uh, many opinions, 
Global citizenship is defined as the belief. The belief that every single one of us here, including you, as well as me, do not just belong to a single tribe or a single community. Rather, we belong to the international society. Rather, we belong to the global society of human beings. So what this means is that we hold a responsibility not only to deliver positive transformations to the country that we're living in, but we also have a big responsibility to deliver positive transformations to other countries outside of this region or outside of your country as well. So this word is actually not a new word that recently came into existence. In fact, this word was once developed by a very famous, um, a very renowned ancient philosopher who goes by the name of Socrates. Socrates was an ancient Greek philosopher, and around the year 200 BC, Socrates used to quote that, I am not an Athenian or a Greek, but I am a citizen of the world. So this is what we mean when we talk about being a global citizen. Many people seem to believe that a global citizenship is a title. Many people also argue that global citizenship is a position. And many, pe many people would say that in order to become a global citizen, you need to be a, a national leader. You need to be a diplomatic leader, or you need to be a president of the international community. However, these are just misconceptions. When I say misconceptions, I mean that the word global citizen is actually not a very big title. It's not a title, it's not a position, it's not something that is so ambitious to achieve, but rather it is a value. A value that lies within all of us, a value that we can all activate if we choose to commit to this idea of global citizenship. So, how do we activate the values of global citizenship and what should we do in order to become global citizens? There are many ways on how to become global citizens. But in my opinion, I believe that the first step to becoming a global citizen is to embrace three important values in our personality. And those values are, one, respect for diversity, two, common humanity, and three, global responsibility. So what do each values mean to me as a person? First one is the value of respect for diversity. Again, we all know that the world nowadays consists of around 7 billion people that are characterized by different races, gender, country of origins, and so many others. A global citizen is not someone who sees diversity as a challenge. But rather, a global citizen is someone who sees diversity as an opportunity. An opportunity to develop societies and also an opportunity to enrich the human race as a whole. For me, respecting for diversity is a very fundamental value of becoming a global citizen. And to me, I also believe that it's more than just about respecting for diversity, but it's also about building connection within the diversity that exists between all of us. To illustrate this, let me give you an example, a story that I want to share. In the year 2015, I had the chance to visit the United States on a one semester exchange program. And while I was there, I did my course in international studies. And I met a lot of people who were from different backgrounds. When I first met them, I was really afraid to talk to them because I thought that they would label me as someone who comes from a third world country. I thought that they would label me as black or label me as someone who is Asian. But then I realized that this is actually a misguided belief. When I was in the States, a lot of people wanted to know more about my country. My roommate, for example, even wanted to learn my language, which is the Khmer language. And other people want to know about what is the taste of my food, what is the taste of my cultural delicacies, and so many other things. When I realized that a lot of people actually want to know about Cambodia, I felt very, very happy. I felt very excited because 
this is the power of connection. This is the power of building that um, relationship within this process of diversity. Now, as a lecturer of international affairs, I teach history of Southeast Asia to many of my students at school. And when I look at history, I can see that societies are mostly divided by um, ideologies, by um, different political systems, and sometimes even by historical events, tragic historical events that happened in the past. But since I know that it's very important for us to connect within diversity, one thing I always tell my students is that we need to know that even though our social identities are different, even though we grew up in different societies with different history as well as different developments, we must focus on identifying what are the commonalities that we can um, basically work on in order to build this sense of human cooperation. Because this is very important. And sometimes we don't actually choose to build commonalities within diversity because we believe that it is such a very complicated process. And sometimes with fear, we have a fear of the unknown. We have a fear of the things that are different. But however, remember that connection is very important. And we have so many YouTube videos and so many historical textbooks that talk about the cultures of other countries. But if we only respect this diversity without choosing to connect within that diversity, then more or less, diversity is baseless. And that's why the first step to becoming a global citizen is to start connecting with people around you and do not discriminate other people on the basis of race, gender, political opinions, religion, and so many other things that exist within our diversity. The second value of becoming a global citizen is to embrace the value of common humanity. Right, humanity. The word humanity itself is a very, very hard word to define. Even I myself do not know why I'm human. But one thing that I know about humans is that we have a sense of belonging towards one another. In other words, we are always aware of the fact that any actions that we do at one particular moment in time can potentially produce implications as well as impacts on other people as well, either positively or negatively. To illustrate this, allow me to give you a demonstration. Now, I want all of you to take out your mobile phones, your smartphones, just take it out, okay? Take out your mobile phones, let's do it, okay? Take it out. Take out your mobile phones and take a picture of someone sitting next to you. All right, let's do it, okay? Take out your mobile phones and take a picture of someone sitting next to you. Can we do it, all right? Okay? All right, so we got one uh, doing here. Okay, now, I want you guys to think, okay? When you were taking a picture of someone sitting next to you, did you were you asking yourself, how am I going to take a picture that's going to make my friend happy? Did you ask yourself that? Did you? Right? Did you ask yourself, how am I going to create a picture that is Facebookable, that is postable on Facebook for my friend? Okay? Right. All of you had that. All of you had that question in mind. Okay? And the fact that, okay, the fact that you asked that question on how your picture is going to impact other people is actually the power of caring. In fact, according to many social psychologists, they argue that each and every human being have this natural ability to care for one another. We call this the compassion as well as the empathy instinct. This means that all of us have this tendency to always care and to always have this belief that our actions can always produce impacts on other people. But sometimes, we ignore this compassion instinct. Sometimes we don't focus it on it very often because we think that it's not important. But remember that 
The second simple step to becoming a global citizen is to start understanding that the actions that you do on a daily basis can always produce an impact on other people living around you. James A. Garfield, the former president of the United States of America, once quoted that, man cannot live by bread alone, he must have peanut butter. What this means is that we don't need peanut butter to survive. It's not our basic source of survival. But what this quote means is that each and every one of us co-depend on one another. Each and every one of us needs to exist between each other and each and every one of us always depends on each other to lead our lives, to also lead our societies, as well as lead anything that we wish to lead. And this is the second value on becoming a global citizen, to start understanding that your actions can always produce an impact on other people's life. And that's why my last value that I think is also important is the value of global responsibility. Right. So we talk about responsibility. Everyone has so many responsibilities in life. You have responsibilities for your parents. I have responsibility for my students. And other people have responsibilities for their children, for their daughters, and for, their, for many other people that exist in their life. But sometimes we fail to recognize that we also have one other responsibility, and that is the response, our social responsibility. And that's why the third way of becoming a global citizen is to start identifying what is your social responsibility. For me, for example, I'm currently teaching international affairs, and a lot of people, again, still question me, why am I pursuing this job? I turn them back because I know that I have a social responsibility, a responsibility to transform my students into effective global citizens so that one day, they will also deliver many changes as well as many developments to other societies around the world. And sometimes people say I'm actually utopian. Sometimes people think that I'm so wishful, I'm so delusional, that I'm doing this, believing that I'm actually able to you know, change the world or change people, but still, I'm still doing it. Because I know that my students are indeed capable. I know that my students can indeed become global citizens, and I know that one day, I may potentially see my student on international media, either saving refugees who are living abroad, or helping to protect the rights of people who are not protected by their own local governments. And that's why the last message that I want to give you all is that we all share this planet. We all are global citizens. Do not be afraid of activating this global citizenship within you. Do not say that, okay, I'm not a global citizen because being a global citizen is just too much. That is not the label that you should be placing on yourself. Rather, you should understand that every single thing that you do is a product of your choice. And so therefore, there is a quote that was once given by a very famous um, American journalist who goes by the name of um, Ellen Goodman. And she used to quote that she is not convinced about anyone who is destined to change the world, but she is actually convinced by anyone who is willing to take small actions and start delivering big differences that could potentially be a big impact to the international community one day in the future. So go back home, start thinking about what do you want to do to make your society better? Start thinking about your, start asking about, okay, what's your passion? What do you want to do to help people prosper and to also help the people around you prosper? And go back home, start thinking about what should you do to build human connection? Always remember that everything that we do is a product of our choice. And if we make the right choice, then we create the right settings for us to make better choices in the future. So, go and become a global citizen. It's not impossible. It lies within every one of us here. Thank you.